My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. You are welcome to another beautiful episode of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. So far, we've touched everything you need to know when it comes to electromagnetic induction except calculations now in this episode we shall begin questions and answers under electromagnetic induction this particular episode will be like a revision class in the next episode we shall solve questions under induced emf in the next two episodes we shall solve questions under transformer then in the next three episodes we shall solve questions under induction coil that should do the magic now i plan to start calculations right from this episode but i thought of something most of you your problem is that you learn to forget you just watch videos you learn you don't even keep anything to mind you don't even hold anything the next thing they ask you questions they forget there are many persons like that this episode is to test those kind of persons if all the questions i ask you don't know any of them then it means you learn to forget because everything or all the questions i will be asking here i did everything in all this episode i mentioned them at least two times so you should not learn to forget and for this episode and the other episodes i shall not be displaying any question at all no i'll just read them out for the calculations i will read the questions out slowly i won't be fast so if you want to write you can pause the videos and write out the questions but i won't display then if you want to get the best experience you can install the flash learners jam application and see questions for yourself now question first a closed coil of wire is placed near a magnet under which of the following condition will there be no current in the coil now if you have a coil near a magnet a coil of wire there is a magnet and a coil of wire mean conductor and there is a conductor Obviously, once you have this magnet and this conductor, under which condition should there be no current or should no current be induced or should no EMF be induced? And under which condition will current or EMF be induced? Let me know your answer. Now, this is it. When there is a magnet and there is a conductor, if there is no motion, EMF cannot be induced. So, when you have a magnet which has its own magnetic field and there is a relative motion, there is motion or movement between the magnetic field and the conductor, that is the only reason EMF will be induced. And this induced EMF will give rise to current. But so long the both of them are stationary, there will be no current and there will be no EMF. Induced EMFs are best explained using dash. A. Faraday's law. B. Coulomb's law. C. Lenz's law. And D. Ohm's law. Which of these laws tells us about induced Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear your answer. If you say Ohm's law, you are wrong because Ohm's law states that voltage is proportional to current. 
an electric current passing through a metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference between its end. In other grammar, voltage is proportional to current, or current is proportional to voltage. And from here, V is equals I. Uh, voltage is current times resistance. That is Ohm's law. Now, Faraday's law states that induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of loss or proportional to the flux linkage. So, it is Faraday's law that explains the induced EMF. Now, a question comes to mind. Which law explains induced current? It is Lenz's law. Why Faraday explains induced EMF, Lenz explains induced current. Take note of that. If you are told induced current can best be explained by a dash, it is Lenz's law. And Lenz's law also gives us the direction of the flow. It is in such a way that it opposes the motion producing it. So, Lenz's law obeys the law of conservation of energy. Energy is conserved. What are the factors that determine the EMF produced when a magnet is moved through a coil of wire or through a conductor? The EMF produced is proportional or is equals WBEN. I've given this formula before. That is one formula for induced EMF. W stands for, for speed. Then um, B stands for the magnetic strength. A stands for area and N stands for number of tons. So, a magnet is produced through a coil of wire. The EMF that is generated depends on the number of tons in the coil, the strength of the magnet, and the speed at which the magnet is moved, which is W. A dynamo primarily converts dash to dash. What is a dynamo? And what is another name for dynamo? If you don't know, then you learn to forget. Remember I told you other applications of induction coil. I said that dynamo are electromagnetic generators. We have the AC generator and we have the a a DC generator. And I boldly told you that electromagnetic generator is also referred to as dynamo. They convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. So that is the primary function of dynamo, to convert electrical uh, mechanical energy to electrical energy. On an AC generator, which of the following does not apply? Remember I told you that uh, dynamo can be AC or DC. And the main difference between them is that one has slip ring and the other has split rings or commutator. So, a yes, commutator or split ring does not apply to AC. It only applies to DC. So that is the difference between them. So since you did not see split rings and you see commutator, they are the same thing. And to convert AC generator to DC generator, just remove the slip ring from the AC generator and put split ring commutator in the AC generator. As such, it automatically becomes a DC generator. An alternating current can induce voltage because the reason an alternating current can induce voltage is that it has a varying magnetic field. If there is no varying magnetic field, EMF will not be induced. Which of the following is not directly associated with direct current? A. Dry cell B. A moving coil galvanometer C. A transformer and D. A lead acid accumulator Anywhere you see transformer, know that it is not associated with DC at all. In fact, transformer is only associated with AC, while the equivalent part of it in DC is the induction coil. It steps up DC, while transformer steps up AC. When a transformer has more secondary windings than the primary winding, is it a step-up transformer or a step-down transformer? 
But secondary windings mean it is a step up transformer. And as such, it will have a smaller secondary current. Because the more the windings, the lesser the current and more the voltage possibly. The induction coil works on the same principle as a transformer. Yes, they work on the same principle. Induction coil works on the same principle as the transformer and they both work on Faraday's law, that is electromagnetic induction. That uh, both transformer induction coil, they are application of electromagnetic induction. And Faraday is the inventor or the founder of electromagnetic induction. As such, they work based on the principle or the laws of Faraday. Light me up, oh Faraday. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this episode. I hope you are refreshed. See you in the next episode where we shall see calculations under induced EMF. Take care of yourself and be nice. Get the flash NAS app, subscribe, tell others about what is going on. Take care of yourself.